Well, happy Friday, everybody. I'm meteorologist Jason Michael, joined by the great executive producer, oh. Terry Ellison. Okay, wow. That's how we're doing. <laughs> okay, happy Friday. Happy Friday, everybody. Uh, it's a big weekend. It is a big weekend. I wish it was a little less windy out there today. I'd, like, once again, I, I mean, how many of these have we done? I feel like all winter long, the story has, if it's not been the cold, it's been the wind. About 375 days. Mm, yes, that's <laughs> approximate, yes. That's what it feels like, at least. But man, is it windy. I was just looking through some of our um, wind damage reports. They're coming in fast and furious from all over the area. Lots of trees and limbs down. Um, so take it easy out there. and. Just hope that, you know, nothing falls in your backyard today. Yeah, you know? even earlier uh, this morning when I was driving in about 345 this morning, my vehicle was like, mm -hmm. rocking oh, it's, you're rocking on the highway. And I was right next to a tractor trailer and I was saying, hey, guy, can you just stay over there? And yeah. You know, so let's get to the wind. We got a lot of other fun things to talk about too, but we should start off with the uh, our next weather alert, uh, which is uh, really through today and perhaps even we may extend it through tomorrow because it looks like another windy day tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Maybe not quite as, as uh, highest today, but still gusts up to 60 today. I've we've already seen several over 50 uh, this morning. That'll continue through this afternoon. So, I guess there's no like. I'm thinking about what's in the backyard. You don't have Christmas decorations out anymore. Obviously, you maybe don't have your patio furniture out. So. Maybe it's not a bad time of year. Maybe just the, the trash barrels. You... The trash barrels. I saw a recycle bin over on Harvard uh, earlier this morning. It was right in the middle of the street, and uh, okay. just had to go around that. So uh, yeah. don't let that become your neighbor's problem. You probably hear from them. Unless it's a nice <laughs> trash barrel, then I might just take it. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, so yeah, the, we, the winds are highest in the Berks in the higher elevations. So that's where that darker. Uh, shade is there in Worcester County and in the Berkshires where we'll see gusts to 60, but pretty much everybody through about 7 p.m. is gusting to 50. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's just going to be a persistently uh, windy day. And if you, it's funny, if you just look outside from the office or from your bedroom, it kind of looks kind of nice, like it's sunny out. You wouldn't Beautiful really know. Day. And then you step outside and you're like, whoa, you know, Bruh. you're going to lose a, a glove or something. You know, yeah. It's just going to fly right off. Here's our uh, wind gust forecast, friends, as we head into the afternoon, still expecting a range of gusts 30 to 40 plus miles per hour and likely remaining at least elevated plus 20 plus to 30 plus overnight tonight. So they will die down into the evening hours and then ramp back up again for tomorrow. And as Terry, I was advising people this morning, the big question is, Jason, why have we had so much wind and why is this wind so rampant right now? Mm. Up to the north and east of us, we have dual areas of low pressure that brought a lot of the heavier rain uh, over the past uh, 24 to 36 hours. And because we also have sunshine and stable conditions, we have a dominant area of high pressure to the west. So we're sort of right on that, we're right in the middle of both of those systems, which is just basically allowing all this wind to just continue funnel in, yeah. and funnel in. And unfortunately, none of those systems are moving along too quickly, and that's why you know the winds will continue through the day tomorrow. Again, probably 10 to 20% off their peak from today. Mm -hmm. um, and Sunday, uh, again, an probably another 25% lower. So by Sunday afternoon, it'd still be breezy, but definitely not nearly as impactful as it is today. So. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's the weekend, that's the win, but uh, let's move on to some more uh, happier things. And first off, uh, if you want to uh, head out tonight after sunset and if you have some clear skies, there'll be a few clouds around, but Mars and the moon in the southeastern sky and even better, tomorrow night, same time, right next to each other in the southeast. So if you're out with your, you know, maybe you're out on a date and you're walking down the street and you say, hey, look, there, that's Mars right there next now to the moon. that sounds romantic. There you go. You can <laughs> sort of show off some astronomical knowledge uh, while you're out and about. Um, Gives a little definition to a moonwalk. That, oh. Yeah. <laughs> I'm here all day, folks. <laughs> uh, but Cooler definitely, yeah, start to the weekend, it seems. Uh, temperatures will be right around 40 degrees. It will be windy. Now, we're actually expect a few flurries and flakes um, towards the late morning hours tomorrow into the afternoon. Don't worry. No accumulations. We're just going to have some roll-off flakes move on in because of those steady winds. Probably fetching a little bit of energy off of the uh, eastern, areas, eastern areas of uh, Lake Ontario. And, mm -hmm. you know, for some areas uh, near Erie, they'll you know, probably fetch off a little few flakes as well. Well, but it's a monumental weekend as we add another hour of day. This is my favorite spring weekend because I just love the later sunsets. Uh, that Sunday sunset at 6.44 p.m. Um, you know, this is when you can actually get home. You know, those of us that work semi-regular shifts and still go to work, you can get home and you can still get outside for an hour or so and yeah. you go, you know, go for a walk or hang out on the deck, assuming it's warm enough. Um, but yeah, so before bed Saturday night, you know, just set those clocks ahead. 
you lose an hour of sleep, but to me it's worth it just to get the later sunsets. Yeah. Actually, let me ask you, as somebody that has to get up pretty early in the morning, maybe this is not your favorite time of year. I, I'm glad that it's happening on a weekend where mm -hmm. it kind of like can allow my body to adjust a little bit. I think what I'll possibly do on Sunday evening and probably actually all hours next week, I'll just go to bed probably a half hour earlier. Okay. Half hour earlier and maybe, yep. you know, also take myself off of my phone and, you know, no TV Good luck time with that. or anything like that. It's very <laughs> tough. It's very tough. Yeah, and I mean, it's also a little bit, might be a little bit tough adjusting the body clock, getting the kids to the bus stop, going to be maybe darker than it would have been, obviously, you know, this week, so. I think 7.06 is the sunrise on Monday. Yeah, so that, you know, it's not it's not all the best news, but for me, those sunsets are worth it, and obviously, we're gaining so much, so much, we're gaining over two minutes of daylight per day now, so. Um, we're gonna get we're gonna get it on both ends. We'll have we'll have the earlier sunrises, the later sunsets coming, and you can see by March 23rd, just a couple weeks from now, sunsets are at seven o'clock. So and we're back to 6:41. Yeah. Sunrise. So we make up we make up some time really quickly. Um, and boy, 8 p.m. sunsets I think coming later in April, early May. So we're making we're making up lots of time. And actually, uh, I threw this graph again. So. Um, the month of March is when we gain the most amount of daylight. Uh, so you can see if you kind of follow the contour there, and we, we gain more than 80 minutes of light wow. just in the month of March alone. And that is, again, the, um, the month in which we gain the most light. It starts so to go back the other way in April. So noticeable difference between, let's say, March 1st and April 1st. Oh, yeah. 80, 80, more than 80 minutes of uh, extra daylight. So, and what better way to ring in the month? And uh, everything is sort of trending uh, this month milder. We're fine. I feel like we're finally sort of ridding ourselves of the persistent cold. Mm -hmm. uh, no, you wouldn't know it if you went outside today. Mm -hmm. But um, over the next six to ten days, and this is a, from the uh, Weather Prediction Center. And over the next eight to fourteen days, the the warmth sort of shifts to the east. We love it. So here we go, right into spring. I uh, got to go out and you know, I tune up my bike. Oh wow! Yeah, okay. Yeah. I got to tune it up. It's yeah, been in the garage. Uh, we we actually just over the last couple of days and uh, up I live up um, in Merrimack Valley. The snow is finally gone. I mean, there's a couple patches in the shade, oh. um, but it's felt like we've had snow cover up there for really almost the entire winter, at least since January. And we finally are seeing some green or brown. Mm. Um, so it's kind of nice. It's kind of making you think about the bike or going off for a walk. You know what? It is quite interesting. I live on the South Shore. Snow is all but gone down. Right. However, yesterday I actually had a shoot. A new do your job is coming, so stay mm -hmm. tuned. It was up in Wilmington. Yes. Um, and I noticed a lot of homes there still had snow That's right. on the ground. Yeah, especially in the shade. It takes a it takes a little bit longer. Um, but the, I mean, certainly by if with this warmth coming, you know, I, I guess the big question, and I think it might even be our next graphic. Oh no, one more. Mm -hmm. um, so with all these 50s and potentially 60s coming up. Um, I actually had someone ask me the other day, um, you know, are, is the snow, are we done? Like, is, is, <laughs> oh, those questions have started now. <laughs> are we done with snow? Can we, can we put away, like a lot of folks have this, the snow stakes on their driveway, uh -huh. or the snow shovels, can I put my snow blower away for the winter? And I said, that, no, what I said yesterday was, it's, it's March 5th or 6th, like, come on now. I, how long have you lived in New England, you know what I mean? Um, but I will say, and I, this is the graphic I was about to talk to, um, this is just sort of a probability type map. This is off one of our, um, it's called the European model. So this takes into account the next two weeks and it's a, it looks kind of confusing, but basically what this shows is that green area and from like Boston, Worcester, Northern Mass, that's about 30% chance of one inch of snow at some point over the next two weeks. So that's kind of low. Mm -hmm. So basically this is saying, you know, there's a one in three shot that we may get as much as an inch, but there's more, there's a two in three chance that we, that we don't. Yeah. So and the trace tomorrow counts towards that. Right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So I I'm cautiously optimistic for those that don't want any more snow that we we might be approaching kind of the the end of the yeah. the snow. I mean, hate to say that it, it, early in March, but um, the averages. So uh, our last inch in Boston is March 16th. That's the average. So we're about a week away from that anyhow. Um, last measurable snow we averaged towards the end of March, but so we're getting there. Yeah, yeah, we are it's, getting it's there. really not that far away. And I think a lot of, I mean, once we get to St. Patty's Day, you know, people yep. are gonna be like, okay, this is the first shot of spring. And then obviously the time is changing. So mentally and emotionally, we're gearing up for warming conditions, but mm -hmm. mother nature still has the final say. We can still get some isolated strong yeah. storms that may spray the region with some snow or some severe weather. We're actually yeah. moving that direction. Right, too. right. Even even in a warm pattern, all it takes is, you know, one or two days, a cold it's shot, it's the storm coming at the right time. But we don't see any of that in the 
short term. So um, what we do see with the warming temperatures are some allergies starting to sprout up. I, I don't know if you, do you have any allergies? Do you have any spring I allergies? I don't have them right now, but okay. I bet they're coming. So I've started to feel it just a little bit, and I'm not Ragweed sure. Ragweed is my worst. Oh, oh, okay. Well, now we're in the tree pollen, we're approaching the tree pollen season. Uh, right now it's juniper and poplar, but um, so if you're starting to feel it, it's not your imagination. You know, once we start getting these 50 degree days, uh, it, we, it, you know, it's inevitable. It starts mm -hmm. to happen. Um, so we're in the low to moderate category for those tree pollens through the weekend. Um, and interestingly enough, we just got this graphic the other day sent to us from Climate Central. Um, basically, if you take the last 50 or so years, um, we're at Boston is averaging more than two weeks um, extra sort of allergy season because of oh, the warming times. Okay, okay. Um, so if the allergies seem like they're starting earlier and end ending later, they really are. Yeah. Um, warmer climate, more allergies. Um, so I just thought that was an interesting stat. Um, more fun times. Oh, more fun look times. at this. Eclipse are <clears throat> making their way back into yes. the region. Okay, Friday, uh, March 14th, we'll have a total lunar eclipse, and then Saturday the 29th, final Saturday, we'll have a partial solar eclipse. Do you still have your uh, eclipse glasses? I'm not sure. I, I gotta fix that. <coughs> I'm gonna have to look. Somewhere. I think it might be in my desk at home somewhere. Hmm. So yeah, two fun things to look forward to. Um, <clears throat> the lunar eclipse will be middle of the night. Oh yeah, yeah, see there, okay. Um, solar eclipse happening at sunrise, so. <clears throat> You got something in there, huh? A little bit. Okay, okay. Spring countdown, everybody. Springing forward. Okay, two days away. Okay, we do know that already. St. Patty's Day, less than two weeks away, along with the spring equinox. Finally, officially making our way into the spring season, less than 14 days away. 13 to be, in fact. And the big home opener, at least opening day, is going to mm. be happening at Fenway Park. Four weeks is, away from Fenway Park. And the crowd goes wild. I just, it's not that far off. It really isn't. Uh, it's exciting. Once it's baseball season, once the home opener happening, hey, it's hands down. Winter is done. In my book, in my playbook, winter is done once baseball is I, I would agree up. with that. I would agree with that. So we're four weeks away then. We're four weeks away. Okay, let's yeah. do it. Uh, look, next seven days, that's a lot. Of, uh, keep in mind, average temperatures right now are in the low 40s. So that's yeah. a pretty mild looking seven this days. This is a mild stretch. And it happens right as we head back into the office on Monday, low 50s, uh, mid to upper 50s on Tuesday and Wednesday. And I will point out, friends, I put pick of the week. That's my pick of the week. If you like it colder, hey, hands off, hats off to you. But you had I your do. months. You had your three months of cold. <laughs> I do. I've, I've had it. I've had enough of it. Um, so even some models are saying by midweek we could actually hit 60 degrees. There could be our so. first 60. We have not hit 60 yet this year, so that would be the first time. It, I was it, a little I, conservative in putting that on there, but I, I bet just you wait that, until Monday when I come back. Oh, there you go. <laughs> There'll be 60s all over the place. I think sometime in the next week or so we will hit our first 60. In, in part, not everywhere, but parts of the area. So that's kind of a milestone. That's mm -hmm. exciting. Let's keep hope alive. Let's do it. He's alive. All right. All right, everybody. Have a wonderful weekend, a fantastic Friday. I'll see you coming up shortly on the noon mm -hmm. show. And Alyssa will be in later on this evening. And don't forget to, if you're watching us on YouTube, to click like and subscribe. Follow us. We love to do these weather chats and uh, keep you informed of all the good stuff going on. Have a great day, everybody. Enjoy your weekend and stay safe. CBS News Boston is now streaming live on our YouTube channel every morning from 7 to 9 a.m. So if you're watching us streaming on YouTube, please like and subscribe to our channel, CBS News Boston.